Hey guys, it's Rhett from the 100 Acre Wood Highlands. It is New Year's Eve. Hope you guys had a great Christmas and time with family. We did, we're ready to kiss 2020 goodbye and start a brand new year. And for us, the day of Christmas, after we were done with gifts and meals and time with family, I had a long list of chores to get ready because this here is PC Emporia. She is our new Highland heifer that we purchased online through Cowmatch. And the farm that she came from and the gentleman that lives there, Tom, was gracious enough to come down to Iowa. Uh, that way we didn't have to drive all the way to Minnesota. But the day after Christmas, we loaded up the truck and trailer. I assembled a temporary pin to put her and Moose in here together. And we had a thousand mile drive ahead of us round trip to get up to Iowa and back. I'm gonna show you a little bit about the, uh, the drive up there to get her. We met at a truck stop in Missouri Valley, Iowa to, uh, to get her. But now she is here working on a little bit of halter time with Moose and she is a, just a good looking cow and we're excited to have her. So if you haven't already, if this is your first time here, uh, please subscribe to our channel. If you've got questions or comments, leave them down below. And you can find me on Facebook and Instagram by searching 100 Acre Wood Highlands. Let's check it out. Okay, so I went and got some corral panels that I had down by the barn to kind of throw together a makeshift pin here because when we go get Emporia, I want to be able to put her in a small pin for probably five days or so to where I can feed her, I can water, I can get up close to her and handle her and get her used to me before I let her loose with Moose and Pepper here in this pasture. So if you know from my other videos, Moose and Pepper were in this pen where, or this field where we have 18 acres. And uh, Moose was figuring out how, to, out how to get out like every day. I'd catch her, put her back in here, and then she'd be gone back in the other field the next day. So I have taken down about maybe 300 feet of barbed wire fence over there, was, which was a really, really old fence where I think she was getting out. And so while I've got Emporia here in this pen, getting her used to me, I'll spend those few days rebuilding that area fence. That way they can't get back out in the other field with the other cows. All right, we made it to Omaha, Nebraska, drove through some pretty areas in Kansas on our way up here, got to our hotel, we're right next to Bass Pro, so that's gonna be pretty nice, and we're gonna find a restaurant, and then tomorrow in the morning, we'll meet them to get uh, Emporia, which, fun fact, we drove through Emporia, Kansas to get here. All right, it's the next morning. Last night, we hit up Bass Pro Shop, we got some sushi, it is cold up here. It's like 28 degrees and a little bit of snow on the ground. But we are about 20 minutes away from where we're going to meet them with the cow. Uh, they messaged me the other day and said that she's grown her long shaggy hair for the winter already. And I'm kind of looking forward to getting back down to Oklahoma where when we left it was like 60.
So the drive up to Iowa is actually pretty nice. We drove through the Flint Hills in Kansas and lots of farmland in Nebraska, stayed the night in Omaha, picked up Emporia the next morning and then drove all the way back and got back here to the 100 Acre Wood Highlands right as it was dark. And we put her here in this pen and then the next day I went and caught moose, that way she'd have some company. But part of our goal in the last few months is that I wanted to start adding some more American Highland Cattle Association or ACA registered cows. And part of the reason in doing that is because I like the concept of having that registration and maybe being able to show some cows in the future. Emporia here has been showed before in York, Nebraska, and she did really well in her uh, division or her class. And so something I found out while we were up there is that we could potentially show her up there again next year or maybe at some other show places. And so that's kind of why I've got moose here on the halter rope as well, because if I want to make all the drive all the way back up there again, I might as well take more than one cow. But that's something that I'll have to do a little bit more research into and I'm kind of excited about the idea of but I wanted to have more registered cows. When we first started raising highlands, I didn't have you know a huge, huge need to have registered ones. I just wanted something that looked like a Scottish Highland cow. But now I kind of, I kind of like the idea of having a little bit of both. And uh, right now we have 20 cows total, and only three of them, three of them, are registered in the American Highland Cattle Association. So I, Tom shared with me a little bit about the American Highland Cattle Association. And I learned some stuff that I didn't know and I wanted to share with you guys. So the American Highland Cattle Association was started back in 1948 on the XX Ranch in South Dakota. Uh, the ranchers that lived there uh, and, and a group of other cattlemen formed the original association which they called the American Scotch Highland Cattle Association. Then in 1992, the name was changed to what it is today, the American Highland Cattle Association. And so here we are, you know, 72 years from the time that that was originally formed, that association is still growing and assisting members, and it is the only full-blood registry of Highland cows in the U.S. So something that I, I never really had thought of and really didn't know the difference of uh, until Tom shared it with me is the difference between a full-blood and a purebred cow. So a full-blooded cow means that in its pedigree, going back to the beginning of the herd book, there is no crossbred cow in there at all. So it's 100% pure. So a full-blooded cow is the, the most pure that a cow could be. Now, something I think about is that, well, those, those herd books only go back so far. And there's really no way of knowing previous to that record keeping if there was any crossbreeding in there but it's as pure as it can be. So that's a full blood. A purebred cow could be, you know, 85, 95% pure, but somewhere in its pedigree, there is a crossbred cow in there. So, you know, like I mentioned earlier, most of our cows are not registered cows. That doesn't mean they're bad cows. It just technically means they're a commercial beef cow. They have all the breed characteristics. They got the long hair, they've got horns, they look and walk and talk and sound and smell like a Highland cow. They just don't have the paperwork to go with it. So the purpose of these associations is to maintain that record keeping, maintain that registration, because those original founding members of that association knew that if there wasn't an association or people in charge of keeping those records, that the breed could get diluted, uh, it could get crossed to the point where you didn't really recognize it the same today. And that's a critical function because before 2019, Highland cows were actually on the Livestock Conservancy's um, kind of watch list because there just weren't a ton of them. Now they're off that list now, but there are still just not, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of them like there are Angus or some other breeds of cows. So it's really important that if you're going to keep registered animals that you keep up that registration process because, you know, once you get lazy and kind of drop that record keeping process, you've kind of lost that bloodline for forever. You know, you can't go back and pick it back up again necessarily. So that's something that kind of intrigues me a little bit about the American Highland Association. So that's what the association does. They're dedicated to preserving the breed integrity, maintaining that registry, and assisting the members in promoting this breed. So if you're gonna raise Highlands, uh, that's one of the reasons I think it's important to join the associations. The American Highland Association is kind of the national uh, association and then there's sub chapters underneath it um, like the one I talked about recently the South Central one which is just now being formed. So Emporia here 
is kind of the start of a new journey that we're gonna take with maybe having some heifers that we show in the future. I'm super excited to have her. You can kind of tell from her hair that it's it's grown longer than I uh, had seen in the pictures of her, but it's still more trim and more uniform than Moose in the back here, I'll kind of show you. And she's a little bit more used to being tied to a halter and led around and brushed. Her tail's a little trimmed up, and she's just a, a wide, thick, good-looking calf. And if you can kind of tell the difference here, One of the other things that I thought was pretty impressive about Emporia is that she was born in April of this year, I believe. So she's eight months old and Moose back there is over a year old. And so Moose is a little taller, but she's just not like considerably bigger. Uh, Emporia is pretty stinking wide here and just a good looking calf. She's been used to being fed grain. And so that's something that, you know, my heifers and stuff, you know, the, after they're done nursing, they pretty much go on cubes and hay. Uh, but I think we're gonna keep on feeding some grain to these calves to kind of keep up that good growth and muscle quality on them, if, especially if we're gonna show them. But super excited to have them here on our farm. If you haven't already, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram by searching 100 Acre Wood Highlands. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.